Smith. Thank you for tuning in to another segment of Ask Jamie. Today we're going to talk a little bit about trim tabs for your outboard motor. Now, some of you guys know these as trim tabs. They also serve another purpose as a sacrificial anode. And the one that we're talking about today goes right on the bottom of the anti-cavitation plate. And this little guy right here is something that you see on all the outboards, but so many people don't understand their true function. So we're going to go through both of their two main functions today. First off, there are particles in the water in which you boat, especially if you tie up that marina, it's called electrolysis. And this is generated by people that plug into shore power or a poor grounding while you're at the marina. And what happens is the electrolysis process, to put it into a simple term, attack metal and they eat up the metal. And to give you an example, this is an anode that came off of another boat, and you can see here how much it's been eat up. This is not corrosion, this is actually due to the process of electrolysis. Very important that we have this on our outboard at all times, regardless of where we boat. Now, second, because this is a single outboard configuration, your outboard will create a factor called P factor. You may have heard that. It's an airplane uh, terminology, but a propeller on a boat, much like a propeller on an airplane, it's turning one way, which means that it's, it's giving uh, unusual forces in the opposite direction, meaning that the motor always wants to go to right because this is a right-hand rotation. This little trim tab will take that pressure and help this motor stay aligned at all times, running in a straight line, which is exactly what we want unless we want to turn it. So two important factors here. One, obviously it, it's treating against the electrolysis whenever you're out boating. Second, it helps keeping your outboard running straight. Now, how do we adjust this for a proper running outboard? Oftentimes when you get on your boat, especially a new boat, or if you've repowered your boat, You'll notice once you get up to full throttle, your motor's just not running quite straight. You'll notice a lot of pressure on the steering wheel, or maybe when you take your hands off the steering wheel, it will want to drift, or in some cases, actually grab and dig and want to go to the right really quick. Each of these trim tabs are mounted on the back, on the underside of the anti-cavitation plate here, and can be gotten to by going into the top cap uh, at the, the top of the, the midsection here. Almost every outboard manufacturer will have a nice little, I'll put this guy back here, I took it off a little too quick, a uh, nice little plastic cap or a rubber cap just to keep that hole concealed. Um, now I am using just a regular 3 8 ratchet. This is just a single bolt and this guy right here happens to be a 12 millimeter. And to adjust or to take this off, you're simply going to fish this wrench right down inside the lower unit. Make sure you get it, and we're simply going to loosen it up. You may see it's actually turning now. Now, if we're just adjusting the trim tab to get our outboard running straight, you just want to loosen it just enough. Uh, so you can actually come and adjust, adjust the trim tab uh, so the trim tab doesn't come all the way off. Now, real important, which direction do we point the trim tab uh, is dependent on which direction you are having the trouble. So let's just assume that your motor pulls hard to the right. You're simply going to move the trim tab to the right. You will adjust the trim tab in the direction that you're having the issue. In this case, it's pulling to the right. So we'll move this over. Now on the bottom, and this is going to be a little hard to see, there's actually some hatch marks from the manufacturer, kind of like a sundown. And this is zero degree. This is one click over, two clicks, three clicks, and so on. When you're adjusting your trim tab, make sure you're only doing it in one click increments. It doesn't take a whole lot to correct the problem that you're experiencing. So real important. Uh, also, if you're having trouble with, uh, with it pulling to the left, say this was a counter rotation engine or it was a twin engine configuration, same thing. You'll just want to bring this trim tab to the affected, to the affected area. Now, since we are going to talk about actually replacing uh, our trim tab, so what, let's go ahead and we will take this guy completely off. 
trim tab, even for you guys that leave your boats on the trailer, you're still going to have to do this once every couple of years. If they're in the water, like Pollocks just have a funny way of being wherever you are. Anytime you start to see a little bit of wear and tear. This happens to be a brand new anode that we just put on. Uh, they have part numbers on the inside here. Another good thing to put into your logbook or your GPS book so you know exactly what model you have. And when do you know it's time to change? This happens to be the anode that we took off. You can tell that it's really starting to get beat up and it's starting to get nice and white and, and crusty, which means that it's losing all of its uh, properties to catch those electrolysis and let them feed on this sacrificial metal versus eating up your, your pretty outboard. Uh, this happens to be another one. Uh, this anode, actually, the electrolysis got to the inside of it. You can tell here where it actually ate the entire bolt housing off of it. When they start to show signs of wearing and tearing, or if it's been longer than about two years, spend the 12 bucks and buy yourself a new one. So you saw exactly what we did. We took the 12 millimeter socket, we simply unscrewed the bolt from the bottom of our anode. When you have the new anode ready to go on, you simply line the new anode up with the bolt, bolt that's already inside of the motor housing. And we're going to set this one back exactly where it came from, which is one click off of dead center to the right. Again, just a 3-H drive. Everybody should have one of these in your, in your toolbox on your boat. I'm going to give this thing a nice snug, not overly tight, but a nice snug uh, turn to make sure that it's on there and it's on there right. Afterwards, just want to take, just pull on it or push. Make sure it's seated in there well and everything is, is jam up and right where it should be. If it's not, or you've cross-threaded, since the metal is so, uh, it, it's pliable. It, it's almost like a sinker, or it's made out of lead, so it's almost like a fishing sinker. If you get the bolt in there crossways, it's not going to stay on, and at some point when it does finally come off, it's typically going to come off when your pretty propeller is turning at full speed, and it could damage one of your ears. So you want to make sure this is good and secure. Lastly, we're going to take the same little cap that we took off, Pop this guy right back in so now that hole is concealed. And guys, it's as simple as that. So when you're out boating, don't forget to check your anodes. Matter of fact, when you get through watching this segment, go outside and see what condition they're in. Thank you for watching. <laughs>